Uh, Intel had their DCAI day, and DCA, DC is for data center and AI. If I have to yep. explain that, uh, you shouldn't be listening to this show. But uh, <laughs> it was a, it was a, it was an investor, uh, it was an investor communication. But as as you know, we've all learned in this 21st century of media, uh, investors, everybody else shows up, right? Because they're they're bound to, and hopefully going to do something and talk about something exciting. So. Matt, what did they what did they talk about? Yeah, it was process node, process node, process node. You know, I think one of the um, one of the areas where uh, Intel, I think they're doing a much better job, is you know letting the street, letting their customers know kind of the vision they have and and where they're taking their parts. Right? I mean, it's it's been a uh, it's been an interesting couple of years um, from a competitive landscape perspective. But I think this is about reestablishing that uh, confidence and trust with customers. And, and they're doing some pretty amazing stuff. So, um, you know, they talk about five process nodes by 2025. If you count Sapphire Rapids, that's four. But, you know, they break it out into what they call their performance core and efficiencies core, efficiency cores. And they're driving the, these things out to a two nanometer process. Um, for those that are listening that wonder what a two nanometer process is, that is the distance between transistors on a um, on a uh, piece of silicon. It's absolutely amazing uh, that they're going to get down to that. Um, they talked about lots of cores, lots of performance. Um, I love the story they're telling, Pat and Will, and, and this is why um, I think they've done a really. Some people look at. I'm going to go kind of ADHD on you. Uh, that's all right, though. Um, I hey, man, at, you're uh, you, you've got the mic, buddy, baby, run it. <laughs> oh, all right, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> You know, when they launched Sapphire Rapids, a lot of people looked at it and said, okay, you know, kind of reestablishing themselves, some really good stuff in there, you know, relative to their competition, where are they? I looked at Sapphire Rapids and I thought they did a lot of the really hard work and heavy lifting up front um, through their acceleration engine strategy, right? Build all these accelerators in to easily increase the performance of, of workloads. And then you can add more cores later. But this is like foundational work they got done with Sapphire Rapids. And now they're going after kind of that naked, you know, raw core count. And um, I, I like to call it billboard spec yeah. uh, perspective, right? Kind of building upon that. And, and what they also did, uh, which I thought was fabulous, was, you know, through one API and through the ecosystem work they've, they've done, they make these acceleration engines so easy to turn on and to light up and improve your workloads. You know, in, in, in years past and generations past, all of these silicon providers, they build out these CPUs or um, other pieces of silicon, and you need an advanced degree in computer science or electrical engineering to actually take care of the instruction extensions that they're providing. And Intel's taken all that away. All that heavy lifting is gone. It's really... I don't want to call it point and click simplicity, but they've made it far more simple um, for IT organizations to fully realize the capabilities of these, these CPUs. So I think they did a, a great job of telling their story. I love where they're going. Um, and it makes it, it makes the next few years really fun because, you know, their competition is, is got their foot on the gas, uh, but they do as well. And, uh, you know, I like to say it's kind of like a brand new, in my, from my perspective, it's like a brand new Intel. Uh, new company, new attitude, new outlook, and uh, you know a lot more customer centric uh, than the Intel we know of past. Yeah, I don't normally uh, pay too much attention in Wall Street's reaction. I mean, Wall Street is very short term oriented, mm -hmm. and I don't think they they they're looking at what industry analysts uh, look at. I mean, there's some crossover, but there's not 100 percent alignment. The stock soared. I mean, the stock soared because Intel didn't come out with a slip. Right. <laughs> like <laughs> the expectations are so low, and and you know we might argue. I think it may have been Sierra Forest where where people thought it was a pull in, but uh, yeah, Matt. Um, you know, adding kind of this many core to to deal better with the ARM community. You know, throwing mm -hmm. a bunch of e cores, taking out some of the special sauce and the accelerators that. You know, quite frankly, uh, a lot of the hyperscalers don't use, yep. right? Uh, yeah. For uh, particularly for basic workloads that can't use the, ex the the acceleration. And you know, Matt, you and I were always doing the analysis on you know you, you know how much die, how many features. Uh, yep. Sometimes the engineers just thrust it down our throat, but yep. uh, we had to do we had to do the best in it. So uh, I thought that was good. 
Uh, there's also a lot of pressure uh, aside from SOCs, and Paul would naturally do this, but I'm going to stumble my way through this, uh, related to uh, dedicated accelerators. So, mm -hmm. and actually, NVIDIA GPUs, even the H100 and the A100, are not fully dedicated. <clears throat> they do have some specific blocks, uh, but the beauty is that they're programmable. And and when models are changing every year, model size is changing, you have to have some level of, of programmability. And that's why NVIDIA is, is taking on the show. And my gosh, their stock freaking catapulted now, particularly uh, as we're looking at this new generative AI uh, piece. But uh, most training today, if we're being intellectually honest, 99% of that training, accelerated training is done, done on an NVIDIA uh, uh, accelerator inference is a little bit different. Most inference is actually done on a CPU. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, where does Intel play uh, in that? I, I like that Intel talked a lot about software because I am fully confident that Intel will come out with a competitive piece of hardware. Same thing for AMD, but yeah. Nvidia has such a, a lock right now with CUDA that I just don't know how how the industry gets around it. What I would love to see is I would love Intel, AMD, and maybe a Grok or a Tenstorrent align on yeah. software and you know let do that for five years yeah. and get, get your fill and then go and beat the crap out of each other, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but collaborate and then, because NVIDIA, just like we've seen in the highest performance gaming, Right, they are running the table on on training right now. They really are, <clears throat> and you're right. They, uh, I mean, you, you got to tip your hat to them um, because they do. They have a monopoly uh, on the training market. And I think you're right, but I, I will say, I what I like. You mentioned software. That's one of the things I like about what Intel has done is it's working a lot more closely with the software community um, to light these capabilities up and. Is it democratizing, you know, you know, training? No, but it's making it far more easy for um, for customers that might have, you know, because there's a wide continuum of what your needs might be. Um, for those that are on, you know, kind of low to mid end of the the performance continuum, they're making it far more easy um, to train these models and do them simply, um, you know, on an Intel an Intel piece of silicon, which I think is you know great idea. So. Yeah, I did some uh, OEM checks, and this was specifically on the server SOC side. <clears throat> and they're like, it's wait and see, right? Yeah. They're, they like what they hear. Mm -hmm. uh, the company has executed to the five, five, um, five nodes in four years. Mm -hmm. um, but the company has to absolutely deliver.